This week's episode of the STS Guys is brought to you by YardSalesSource.com. Miss out on Father Time's Objects of Desire the first time around? Fear not and take heed for YardSalesSource.com is the place for new, used, and nostalgic items both rare and collectible are up for grabs now with real-time video with descriptive shopping available on YouTube. Acquire what you desire, acquire what time forgot, acquire it now at YardSalesSource.com. Shut up and sit down. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 15 of the SCS, guys. I'm Jeremy. Hey, it's Larry. Hey, it's Nate. And it's Scott. Whoa, episode 15? Uh, holiday week, episode 15. It's 15. like the best holiday ever. Best and worst. Yeah, as I say, it's the one where I spend all the money I've made in the last like month. Spend all the money and you feel like you didn't get any sleep for the last two days. Yeah. You're making it rain. Yeah, I wish I could say that, but it just feels yeah, the first couple of times it's good because you're like, you know, shooting the cash out, and then the last ones you're like, oh God, why did I spend this much fucking money? And you're like, oh God, I got to pay this back. <laughs> yeah. I actually had to take a few things back. I was like, I can't, I can't have this. Like, this has got to go back. So I know I have a couple, uh, like I said, I'm not going to say what, what, what we do this week because I think what we do this week is. Black Friday. Black Friday. Yeah. Black Friday and Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving. Oh, no one gives a crap about Thanksgiving. No, yeah, Black Friday. It's <laughs> family day. It's the Black you Friday that we spend time with about. family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, we didn't even do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, let's... So, Black Friday is the place to go. So I'm, I'm going to start off with a, a quick little what I do on Thanksgiving and then what we do on Black Thursday, Friday-ish. Um, so if you're interested... And if you're looking for a place to eat where, like I said, when they said your family cancels on you for Thanksgiving and you don't have a place to go to eat Thanksgiving, did you know that the Macaroni Grill <laughs> <laughs> serves Thanksgiving and they're open to late do on they, Thanksgiving? Really? Do they have like turkey dinners or do they, is it I just like got still sad Italian for you a little bit. Like, um, I they, just got a little sad for you. It's Don't be sad. It was, it was perfectly fine. Um, it was Macaroni Grill. It was delicious. Yeah, it was delicious. <laughs> um, so we, we had Macaroni Grill and went shopping. Um, it was amazing. Nice. It, it was actually really good. Sounds um, like a solid night. So our our uh, our adventure was like you know Funko had released the uh, blind boxes at, at yeah. the GameStop. Yep. Um, I had posted a picture on our Instagram of, of the craziness that is the line there. Um, so normally, I like in the past, what they've done is they've let you know a few people in the store, and then like I said, a few more people would come in after you know that 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 group had left. Um, that wasn't the case this year. Basically, everyone basically rushed into the store. Like this was a basically fire code waiting to happen. There had to be a good 150 people Dang. inside this yeah. tiny, tiny, tiny GameStop. <laughs> I drove by the same GameStop that you were waiting at probably 10 minutes before they opened. Um, there was what? Like you said, like there were at least 50 people in line. Like yeah. I, I couldn't even see because I'm, I'm driving past, but I'm like, um, damn, like I, I was, I was surprised. What was the, was everybody just going for the Funko boxes or? No, honestly, surprisingly not. No? Yeah. Um, so the, the biggest the ticket item was everyone wanted the, uh, the PS4 Slim. They had it for $199 and then you, they also gave you like a $50 gift card on top of that. Yeah, so. that's the best that's deal a... that things had since it's been out. So yeah. Yeah. I can see why that was that, so popular. That is a ridiculously good deal for that. It yeah, is, the $50 yeah. gift card in addition to it being at $199, you are basically getting it for $150 yeah. and then you can use that to go buy to a game. Like, so, yeah, you get a game basically off of it. And you so. get a one terabyte PS4. No, I was, I said, I, I wasn't even interested in that. I wanted two things from there. I wanted one of the Funko Mystery Boxes. And then I wanted basically a game that I've I've been harassed for not playing. Um, but I said it's a game that I've wanted to play it was, you know, Horizon, you know, Zero Dawn. Yeah, so you finally picked it up off my uh uh suggestion here. Not at that time. <laughs> yes, that was that's part of the story. So you waited to the opportune moment. So they had it. They were supposed to have it on sale for twenty bucks, uh, for uh, twenty bucks there, or no, so twenty five bucks at a uh, at GameStop. So GameStop, so they don't keep their stock out on the floor. They keep their stock behind the counter. So whatever basically empty case they have right. out on the floor is basically what stock that they have. So I grab, you know, there's like two or three cases uh, of this game there, and so I grab one, and so I'm like, okay, sweet, I'm I'm guaranteed this game, you know, as as soon as I go up. So what they had done is they had. Everyone had just asked for the game as they went up rather wow. than, you know, actually pulling the, the case off the off the shelf. So they had sold them all by the time I got up there. So I'm like, 
man, this I just waited in line. You piece that of shit. Like, it's <laughs> yeah, the worst so, feeling. So I waited in line um, for basically nothing. Yeah. Well, uh, it's Black Friday, right? It's the Wild West. There are no rules on Black there, Friday, there apparently. No that is like a, a fair point. I, yeah. I went to Walmart to on their Thursday own. night at 6 p.m. There were no rules. Yeah. Right. Like there was old women throwing elbows at children. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of us went out Thursday night. I yeah. did too. I yeah. didn't get to the store until about seven thirty, and I went to Best Buy, and it was just it was just mass chaos. Now, here's a question: Did you get your mystery box? I did get my mystery box. Just, uh, just one. Uh, I got two. Nice. Um, which I probably should have just gotten <laughs> just the one. <laughs> um, so I will be posting a video of that shortly. I'm not going to tell you guys what I got in that mystery box because I know that some people have, have uh, asked us on uh, the various social media networks because they're like begging to know. They're almost like, more excited than me actually opening this box. Um, so I'm going to keep them waiting in suspense that much longer and basically post a video when I want to. If you want to know, you're going to have to tune into the video. Yeah. Right? Go on YouTube. Well, honestly, it's not that exhilarating. <laughs> <laughs> you can't undersell it before anybody even yeah. sees it. I, I, I'm just going to put it out there. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's socks the, in the box and a lanyard. The, uh, that was a long that moment gap, of That gap says it all. Yeah. Yeah, that, that silence says it all. Well, like I said, we, I, said I wanted... Uh, Two different, you know. Like I said if I, if I was going to get, you know, the box, oh. I, wanted, I wanted to, you know, some some differences. Uh, yeah, I got two of the the same exact box. That sucks. Um, well, I didn't go out on Friday I, I, or Thursday. I, I didn't really even care about those boxes. However, I found myself at the mall this afternoon, and they still had them available. Yeah, God, I was I was surprised. I almost got one, but then I saw the line to pay, and I just lost all interest. Well, the the, the what, what makes me not feel as bad about it is because. A lot of people in line didn't know this, um, but I'm like, I asked the one of the employees there. I'm like, so they had this bag, basically. This, if you could basically shove anything inside this bag, you have 25% off. Uh, technically, they were counting those boxes as collectibles, and so those yeah. were 25. Percent off the boxes too. Yeah, awesome. So, so rather than you know, like I said, the forty dollars for for two boxes, pay thirty bucks for two yeah, boxes. That's so not bad. That's, See, I, had I known that, I might have tried to seek them out more, but I did see that on uh, Reddit like this afternoon or, or this morning. Uh, at least makes a pretty good deal. Like, yeah. I saw some other people got, like, because you could throw pops in there. Um, I'm not sure if we're kind of on clearance items, but I saw some people were picking up, uh, they had a lot of mystery minis and stuff yeah, for so, dirt cheap. Too, yeah, you can, so. you can get stuff like dirt cheap in there. I'm like, so I'm like, okay, you know what? It, it, it made it worth it. Yeah. So I'm like, we, so we, we did that. Um, to, to test my luck one more time, like I said, I, I did order. Uh, another one online um just just that way we can get that you know good old college try to see if we can get that uh that joker you, you know what the, you know what the luck you're getting a, th a third of the one you already got right I, that's exactly what's gonna happen i can guarantee you right now that's <laughs> exactly what's gonna happen i mean i mean he might have some luck i've seen a lot of people opening those and uh, a lot of them have chases in them so there's a good chance yeah i honestly like that i don't even necessarily even need the chase i just want Something literally, different. I just want—I just want the stupid Joker yeah. to go with my stupid eight-bit Batman, and literally, I don't want any more of the eight-bit pops because I don't like them to, to begin with. <laughs> they're already the bane of your existence. Yeah, and, and I see that they're now expanding because I, didn't I just see one of the chases is an eight-bit uh, Demogorgon? Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, that target. That's, yeah, that's not for that one. It was that was a separate target exclusive. Well, I'm but. just I'm just saying like now they're eight bidding things that should never have come in eight bit. Yeah, like, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, I I'm, I don't, I'm not a fan of the eight bit series at all. But like I said, I got the Batman because like said, it was the fir first one in the line. And like I said, I'm like, I just wanted the Joker just so I, I could have the Batman and Joker. That's all I wanted. Makes sense. I don't care if it's Chase Joker. I don't. Like I said Chase, great. If not, I would just want the Joker. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna have the eight bit Batman, you gotta have the counterpart, which is always the Joker. Exactly. So, um, I did see on eBay the boxes without chases were like fifteen bucks. Yeah, for the whole box shipped. Yeah, right. So if you don't get it, check it out. Which it, it, like you'll it, get it for pretty cheap. Exactly. And then like with uh, like I said, with the the extras that I have, I'm like, I think there might be something show opening up in a giveaway pretty soon on the channel. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> right. I hope you guys like lanyards. Yeah. <laughs> And socks. <laughs> and 8-bit <and> pops. <laughs> oh, right. At the end of the day, it's free, so yeah. you better like it. I like it for free. Like, come on. So, as I said, we had that adventure, and then I honestly just bought a shit ton of video games. Uh, just because it, if I can spend, you know, like, like 60, 70 bucks on 
and get like four different video games rather than you know buying one title at a time. So I bought. I'm the, probably the last one of the group to buy Origins, so I yeah. I, so I, I did buy Origins uh, just because that was half off, and then uh, I bought Prey um, because like I said it was 15 bucks. I'm like, okay, even if it's shitty, I'm like it's 15 bucks, and then I got like I said the event, uh, the Horizon Zero Dawn at Target because GameStop fucked me over on that one. Yeah, I mean if the, if there's games that you're waiting on, Black Friday is the day to do it. Yeah. There's always great deals on video games. On and Black Friday. I will warn you, Jeremy, since you did start Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, you will not have a life for a little bit because you're going to want to keep playing that game. Uh, both Nate and I have played it and can tell you that that story is riveting enough that you just want to keep doing those missions. Yeah, well, like it, I said, as you saw me online today, like that's pretty much that was, that was pretty much my day today. Yeah, it hooks well, you good. Well, I watched you game. on there, so I jumped on because I just downloaded the the Frozen Wilds expansion. So it's like, oh, I'll go check that out. And by yep. the way, anybody who goes on there, that, that expansion is hard as shit. So uh, I definitely recommend to go check it out, especially if you've beat the game already and you want a challenge. Check out that expansion. Now, Alexia, so uh, I heard some other Black Friday-ish stories at the table. What else? Uh... Oh, um, so I did some collectible hunting myself. Uh, but it was not the collectibles that you guys think. Like everyone, when I say collectibles, you think like I'm your like, figures or yeah, anything no, like yeah, that. Yeah, no action but, figure, yeah, no pop. Yeah, nothing like that. No? So... What I got was Christmas ornaments. Nice. <laughs> of Ooh. all things. Uh, so Sounds a local exciting. coffee shop around here, Dutch Brothers. I, I'm i sure it's a, a chain or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, it is. They, uh, for Black Friday this year, they had these little coffee cup ornaments that my wife went apeshit for. And so she got my ass up at like 5.30 this morning, not to go shopping at any actual store, but to go get a large coffee so we could try to get our free ornament. Dutch Bros typically has pretty big lines just on a normal Friday morning, right? Okay, how is right. the line? I can't okay, imagine so, how so it would have been. I went to two because the first one, I noped the fuck right out of there. Uh, I <laughs> how, how, how many cars were there? <laughs> there was probably a good 70 cars. It was wow. snaking through yeah. a parking lot. Wow. Like... I feel bad because there was cars parked. I'm pulling my phone. Like, I, I got to see what this yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I, yeah. I, I, see, it's where I'm at too. It, it's, dude, it's not that great. It looks like just a little hot, you know, a little coffee cup, a little Christmas themed coffee cup, a little ornament thing. Um, so I went to one. Uh, it's kind of, so the one that he has, it's kind of like that, but it's more like holiday themed. Yeah. So it has like snow and like a Christmas tree on the side. Yeah, just the it's fact just that a it's Dutch limited. Room. Just a limited thing. Yep. So. There's one that's in a construction zone that I know of, so I was like, that's the one to go to. Smart man. So I drove to that one, but now, granted, by this time, they've been open for like an hour and a half. I was, So I walked up, I'm like, I am not getting these damn ornaments. I go up to the guy at the counter and just order my coffee, because I know I have to order a large coffee to get this goddamn thing. And so I, I order it, and I'm like, hey, by the way, do you have any more of the uh, these ornaments? Guy acts like it's a drug deal. He like suddenly starts whispering to me. He's like, "We might have a couple. <laughs> Just give me the give damn me thing, goddamn, man. If you have one, put it on the goddamn counter. Like, I don't. I'm not asking you just how many do you have left. I'm asking because I want one. Like, that was my cue. Don't. Yeah. Why you gotta make it so weird? Don't dude. make it weird. He's like, "Yeah, we have a few left." I'm like, "Then I want two. Like this, I'm buying two coffees. So you got basically two dime bags of so Chris yes, ornament. This guy turned my coffee thing into a drug deal for a collectible." ornament <laughs> like it was the weirdest experience at 5 30 i've ever had in my entire life yeah on top of it it's 5 30 in the morning so yeah. you're like am i even awake is this a dream yeah, no like my daughter i like me and my wife both went so my daughter's like racked out in the back just like snoring up a storm in her car seat and i'm there with my dealer trying to get these ornaments i did get them and apparently the guy did tell me there's only 250 per store uh but what they're doing is they weren't telling people you get one you have to like ask for yeah. it um, and then we went online later and there's a big shit storm of people that are butt hurt cause they don't have them. So I'm oh, happy social marketing, yeah. social yeah. marketing is a wonderful thing. But yes, I got my two, but it was the weirdest interaction I've had with somebody getting coffee that I've ever dealt with. Well, it is Dutch bros and they're kind of known for being weirdos, right? Like, That's true. You walk normally, the... sorry, normally it's the overly happy guy or girl who you know, wants to be your best friend. Like, yeah. What do you want? I was like, I want the, I want my, I want my collectible thing. He's like, 
I might have a couple of those for you. Like, dude, just give me my ornament. <laughs> yeah, to, La- to Larry's point, though, you go to Dutch Brothers, you're in for a conversation. Yeah. It's no, not one of those, like, I just want my coffee. I want to get out of there. So you're basically saying I would hate this place because that's, yes. that's right. one of the reasons why I hate getting a haircut just yeah. because they try, talk to, to me. They, t- they try to talk to me. So yeah. you, can, you can pull my tactic. Uh, this, this works really well at Dutch Brothers is I just start speaking French to them because uh, like 90% of the people here in Arizona don't actually d- speak it. So uh, I just struggle through my order and then just speak French and the people just don't talk to me because they don't think I understand. That's genius. Yeah, it works. It works pretty well. Yeah, well, I had my own uh, Black Friday uh, story. I went, like I said, I went to Best Buy and I didn't get there until probably about eight o'clock at night. So it was already late on Thursday night. But it was just mass chaos. Um, by that point, as per usual, like Best Buy on Black yeah. Friday, <clears throat> the that, only time anyone ever goes to Best Buy. Well, yeah, fair right? point. When was That's the last true. time we were at Best Buy that wasn't on uh, Thanksgiving Black Friday? That's true. I only go there if there's some kind of crazy deal or something going on. Anyways, I got into the store, mass chaos, people everywhere. Um, I was looking for the Switch, even though there's not any real deals for the Switch on Black Friday. This is probably the first time I've seen them readily available. And I've been after a Switch for a long time, so I figured it was time to do it. Almost every store I went to actually had them for once. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking around. I can't find any Switches anywhere. I start to freak out. I'm like, there's no way they're already sold out. So I go up to a Best Buy employee, and I said, where are the Switches at? He's like, oh, they're all held at the front. I'm like, okay, cool. So I get the other things I'm I'm getting in the store, and then I look to find the line, and I notice that it's stretched all the way back to the end of the store. It is like snaked all the way. So after waiting in line for an hour, I did get my Switch. I got the Zelda Explorer's Edition, which was a Black Friday kind of thing. It came with a map and a, it's and the a Black guide. Black Friday Bundaroo. Yeah, I got some headphones Bundaroo. for the girlfriend. <laughs> Bundaroo. Um, and then I ended up picking up Assassin's Creed's Origins, too. Uh, you just can't beat the deal on that. But yeah, overall, successful Black Friday for me. Awesome. Uh, everybody's looking at me. I, I We had dinner with the family. I got to Walmart, Target, GameStop late. I actually went to GameStop, kind of thinking maybe, you know, cool, if they have a box, I'll get it. Uh, the GameStop by my house, they didn't have any. Um, and then we went to Walmart. It was a mess. Went to Target. There was nothing I wanted at Target either. Um, they did have, like, uh, like Nate said, there was the most switches I've ever seen in stock. They probably had, like, 40 of them over on the floor in the menswear. Well, well, it, systems were weird this year because, like I said, I, so we went out So we went out to tar- we went to Target, like, for, like, 15 minutes after they opened uh, on Thursday. And then we went back today, uh, just because we had to pick up a couple uh, different things. Yeah. Um, just like, hey, you know what? Is there anything that we missed? And so I actually saw Xbox One X's still on the shelf this morning. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, yeah I was. Like, I was there I saw this morning, and there's about, them, there was about is, twenty in the Target by yeah, me. It yeah. was it was completely surprising to me. Well, for a brand I think new console. I think a lot of it is just like the PS4 Slim. There was the Xbox One S. Uh, which was on sale for, I think, 189 So I think a lot of people, if they're going to adopt a new Xbox, they're probably going to go with the S the first. Because yeah. Yeah. I don't know if the X was even on sale at all. I mean, you no, guys it's a brand new wrong. system. It's brand no. new. But, yeah. And, and you, to your point, I don't have any, I have no experience with like an Xbox. I'm not buying like the most like high-end version if there's a cheap version I can pick up. Which exactly. is basically the same thing. The same so, thing. It just doesn't yeah. have the 4K output, which yeah. I don't have a 4K no. TV, so, so it doesn't whatever. matter for me. Exactly. Oh, I did buy one thing whoa, whoa. online at Toys R Us. Here we go. Uh, I bought Injustice 2. Yeah, Awesome. Woo! Great now you just need to get on PS4 so you can play yeah. with us. Yeah, yeah. Yes. not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, well. But yeah, I've got it for Xbox. Well, so. they had them really cheap at GameStop. You can get them for yeah. about 150 bucks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now I know. That's if we go back in time and wait in that 100-person line outside GameStop. Yeah, so. and actually, it's funny that you say that. You bring that up now because I was thinking, I'm going to turn in my you know OG PS4. It's had some weird issues. Let me try to get the Slim. But I called around all morning, and it's sold out everywhere. Yeah. Well, also, kind of, I'm just going to throw this out here on the podcast just so that way it, it is official. Um Nate has been talking so much shit about him being awesome and Injustice 2 being to be able to smack, you know, somebody down. Um, so I'm like, you know what? Before we leave for the movies, I'm like, let's play one round. Let's let's see what's going on. Hold on uh, a second here. N- Nate, uh, who, who won that right round? You won the first round, uh, but if I remember the, the, the correctly. First, the first round, I think, oh, I, run, I, I think I won both rounds, right? 
Well, yeah. So first round being two rounds. Oh, back oh okay. Yeah. I, 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 However, I just, no, wait, so I just didn't know if so, I was playing right. So, no, just because it, it said that I won on the screen. Now, yeah. the first thing that I said is I think these buttons are backwards because the way I play is you know the, you know, the standard light, the standard medium, default heavy. you know controllers. Yeah. Which I didn't default realize controls. that I had. I didn't realize I had customized them, but I will uh, give you the oh, win. Okay. I so, will give you the so, win. We will play again at some point. Here, here, here's the question. So, Jeremy, you and I generally tie or break. So, so me, they, me, me and you are evenly skilled. Evenly skilled and evenly matched. Yeah. Generally, we always come out to like one person has a sliver of health when they finally win. Yeah. So, is that so? So, Nate was talking some, some mad shit, and you're saying that we're actually all pretty much. We're, we're actually a little bit better, maybe? Uh, I, I would think so. Oh, The match was close. Um, it I'm wasn't gonna, close. <laughs> I think you had like a little bit of health left. I had, a, I had over half my bar left on the second round. All right, all right. It sounds like Nate had a disadvantage because he didn't know the button configure. You know, now that I'm Because he say, thought of an excuse on the fly. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is, now that I'm saying I'm like, wow, that sounds like a total cop-out. This guy's full of shit. But it's true. I As customize, does the rest of our audience listening right now. Yeah, I customize my buttons at home i i got it you know i make the light whatever i'm not even going to try to explain it so what we'll did you guys rematch. what did you guys do after you played injustice well before you get to that i do have actually one more thing that uh i did find uh as a pickup for black friday which was the greatest gift i've ever given myself or technically that my wife got for me you found jesus oh no i've lost him a long time ago um Gordon Biersch actually today had a thing where for 50 bucks, you got a year of growler refills. It is literally a coupon book of 52 growler fills. That That's sounds amazing. Cool. That's an amazing deal. It was yeah. an amazing deal. Wow. Now, they are dated, though, so it's kind of sucky. You have four. Uh, you get So each, each month has like four coupons. But I was like, dude, I will... I will wreck this. Yeah. You'll at least get yeah. most of them. Oh, yeah. I'll get yeah. most of them. Like, yeah. If you need help entering a growler, you have three other guys that will help you. I'm no figuring problem. Uh, for each of the podcasts that do end up at my house, we may have a fresh growler of uh, Gordon Beers Marsden here right. for us all to drink. Done. I am okay with that. Nice. So, what did we do after we played Injustice 2? Well... First and foremost, like I said, this is probably the latest. Larry is trying to segue here. I'm trying, but you guys are killing me. Larry's really trying yeah. hard to get us in there. Our next we've, topic. We've, we've, so this is the latest we've ever recorded. Like said, it's, it's, it's 9.30 on a Friday night. Um, I said, it's past my bedtime. And, yeah, we and, normally record and like to Larry's 10. point, so after I kicked you know, Nate's ass in Injustice, <laughs> uh, we decided, you know what? what you know, we talked about it last week on the podcast. We hadn't, so we hadn't seen it yet. We wanted to see it together. We went and saw Justice League. Justice hey. League. Now, I had seen it a couple days ago. Yes. Yeah. So. But me, we're, Jeremy, and Nate went and saw Justice yeah. League together at the same time. Yeah, and we're only about a week late. Yeah. You know, like nah. you said, it came out last weekend, so we all wanted to get it coordinated. Scott went ahead of us, of course, but the three I have of us, a me, theater Jeremy, right by and my Larry. house that has it really cheap on Tuesdays, so I went on a Tuesday. Well, I can't blame you for that. Yeah. yeah. But hey, we have I only all had to spend Justice five dollars on that piece of crap. So I'm hey, really. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. Hold on a second. We got to hold opinions here because Jeremy's been chomping at the bit. I, I know he's chomping really at the wanting bit. to say something. So we're gonna let Jeremy have first here. All right. So initial I didn't know, thoughts. Okay. I didn't know Peter Jackson was a guest director on <laughs> Justice League because you know what? I didn't know that we were having a fourth Lord of the Rings movie. You know. <laughs> The one mother box went to the Atlanteans, yeah. one <laughs> went to the Amazonians, and what one went to the Kingdom of Man. The Kingdom of Man. That's the thing I got like the it was the tribes of men. It was well, even uh, more yeah. Peter it was it's, even more Tolkien than yeah, Tolkien. Well, I'm trying to wreck like, well, and <laughs> the funny thing is, like I said, I, immediately when I saw like said the giant battle going on, I'm like, oh my god, it's the Lord, Lord of the Rings. And then once they basically showed like the division of the mother boxes between all the I'm like I, I lost it. I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, it's Lord of the Rings. <laughs> so do we have to say spoilers? Um, if you don't yeah, want to, so if you don't want to hear spoilers, just go listen skip to something this, else. Yeah, if you have not seen Justice League, you probably shouldn't listen. We, to this we've right already, now. we've given you a week, yeah, to watch it. We're gonna talk about it in depth. If you don't want to hear about it and you are late to the party, go watch one of our YouTube videos. Watch yes. one of YouTube. Skip to like. <laughs> 50 minutes in, we'll probably be done. You can kind of back it up from there. Uh, no, nah, it's pretty much just I think it's going to pretty much take up the rest of the yeah, time. Yeah, we're going to be talking so about the rest go, of the podcast. Go watch Jeremy unbox that Mr. Monopoly Funko Pop, please. There you go. Yeah, did Walmart fuck me over with a boxing? I don't know. Find out on the video. <laughs> yes. So, that Justice League. 
So <clears throat> you bring up a good point. Uh, the mother box is in different places. I'm trying to rack my brain, but there is no comic legitimacy to that at all. No, there's not. No, and there, there's no reason for it. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. No, it's kind of Infinity Gauntlet esque, right? Uh, you it's know, true. He, you know, you know, the thing that really irks me about the whole thing is like, no one like. I get it. It was four thousand years ago, but like. This isn't common knowledge against anybody anymore that there's like Atlanteans and Amazonians. They fought in a fucking war together with a green lantern of all things. Like they saw an alien dude with four arms. Like it's not something that you would forget or that wouldn't be passed down in stories to the point where people would be like, remember that big ass battle where all these people got together? Like, well, someone's yeah. writing that shit down at that point. Where so that's my point. the world almost ended. And yeah, that and like, the other? yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I right. think at least one of those person was uh, like, you know, litter enough to write that shit down. Especially if they're saying that men were involved in the battle. Uh, yes, there is actually no record of this battle. I'm gonna yeah. name off some movies. So I, was, I was watching this entire movie, and then I'm automatically picking out. I'm like, all the movies that I've seen. I'm like, okay. That's where you got that from. That's where you got that from. So, very first opening sequence. Very first opening sequence. Um, the whole cell phone camera. Video. I'm like, uh, Spider Man Homecoming. Come on. <laughs> like, yeah, true. Well, so we opened true. up Spider Man Homecoming with that. But we got the line, "Hey Superman, can you answer some questions from a podcast?" That was awesome. I laughed. Was I laughed pretty, out loud. You did laugh out loud. You're the remember. only one in the whole theater laughing. <laughs> but it was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty amazing with that digitally removed mustache. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, the mustache. <laughs> I was gonna bring it up later. That, that CG I face. I could not. Of Superman. I could not stop focusing on the mustache. Same. It was so distracting to me, and it's really sad that that's because I thought Henry Cavill was one of the strongest parts of the Is movie. It because it looks like he's smelling bad cheese. Yeah, he always does. <laughs> well, his mouth just didn't line up with his face. I remember the girl next to me. She said, "What's wrong with his mouth?" When when, he, when he's like choking Superman out later in the movie, you and he does that good zoom in on his face. Yeah, it looks like he's like someone farted and like Superman <laughs> smelling it. Like, but he doesn't know exactly who yet. Like, so that's true. The mustache was very distracting. I will admit fully that um without that going on it probably would have been a little bit of a better movie to be honest with you why did they do that it was like a reshoots thing or something so jeremy can probably explain yes so paramount which is currently filming the new uh mission impossible they had his mustache under contract as part of his movie deal that he could not shave off the mustache as long as filming was going on. Which so Joss awesome. Whedon came in and basically had to do a whole bunch of reshoots, but he couldn't shave the mustache off. So rather than having him just, you know, just grow a beard, you know, kind of like he did in the comics when he came back to life, yes. um, they went in and carefully, not carefully because it looks like crap, Digitally removed his mustache well, yeah. well, from all the British. And scenes. I think here's the thing I want. Go ahead. When they come back up, like, what was the one thing in the comics that Superman had when he came back to life that he was missing? Thing. Thank you so much. That glorious mullet. I want the glorious and mullet the f- and the facial hair with the black costume. Yeah. I right. want, but I want that damn mullet. I think we're all going to agree on this. And, you know, me and Jerry were kind of talking about it a little bit, but why didn't they just do a full beard with a black suit, just like the comics? Yeah. Make him in yeah. the black suit with a full beard for this movie, and then he gets clean shaven and back in his red and blue like for the I'm next movie. Just like... <clears throat> Rather than making it some weird CGI face yeah. where they're removing the mustache, it would have been a lot easier to say, hey, you know what? Grow it out, and then when you have to do your uh, other movie, then re- shave the rest yeah, of the beard. Yeah, because when you have a beard, you also have a mustache. Yeah. No breach of contract. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Makes sense to me. You're fine. Like I said, and, it fits, and it fits the comic book storyline. Yeah. yeah but, why is it so hard for us? I mean... We we came to a, that solution pretty easily. So why couldn't in they? a matter of seconds? Exactly. I, I, I don't know. But my thing, I think my thing with the movie, I think this is the one thing that could have fixed the movie for me if they would have kept it with the original two movies that they were going to make out of this instead of shoving everything into one movie. Because automatically, like I said it starts off with Batman fighting a parademon, and then he automatically knows that hey, he catches this prowler. Fear is going to basically lure this parademon right, in. Right, that yep. You have no backstory on. There's yep. whatsoever. Backstory on anyone. Yeah, there's exactly. no backstory on anyone. Well, and that's I, the, I think that's the main problem with no, this movie. No backstory on anybody. You know, you got no standalone Cyborg. You got no standalone Aquaman. Well, Cyborg is the one that catches me the most. 
where you thought I thought maybe they were going to give at least a little bit more background than they did. No, it's just but hey, little, I was a football player. I was in an accident. Yeah, there you go. It was an accident. What that what, what they sh- <laughs> what they showed was the same exact clip from the end of Batman versus Superman when he's going through all the little those the little tests, clips, the, the test like things, becoming, or becoming, dad, a becoming a cyborg. cyborg. Right. His dad's and, trying to save him. Yeah, and that's it. That's all that you get. And so I was like. Wait, really? You're just going to recycle that same footage? Nothing? You're not going to expand on that a little bit more? Especially in the key point when he's like, his dad is like, oh, your mom died in that accident. Yeah. Show me the goddamn accident. Yeah. Like, let like, me know why this character yeah. ticks that's at this a, point. That's a great point because I didn't even remember his mom had died. And then they just kind of mention it and they move on. Yeah. yeah. But well, I, did and then the, what happened to his dad after that, by the way? Because that dude just disappears too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So I think Flash, that's the first guy he saves. Yeah. He and then saves at everybody. That point, and then they're just like, go to safety. And then they're like, we're going to keep fighting and all these other things. Like, yeah, right. He was like, unnecessary at that point. Yeah. Like, but like nobody's going to bring up the fact that like parademons showed up. Like, there was like at least 10 people that were in there, right? Yeah. yeah. So, with that being said, what did you guys think about the guy that portrayed Cyborg? Silence. Silence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm too used to the cartoon, like the voice Same. actor. Yep. I can't. Booyah! The, like, yeah. There's no booyah. Yeah. I, there, well, there, was, there was one booyah. Yeah, there was? There was one booyah. At the very end. After everyone's dead, he's like, booyah. No, no, no. no There you go. Yeah. There was no right. booyah with enthusiasm yeah. then. Yeah. That's why I missed it. It was because I was watching for it because I said I was basically, I'm like, I know. I heard from another podcast I was listening to. I'm like, I know that says in here. Yeah. So I was, I was paying attention because I was going to look over at you because I'm yeah. like, I know that you religiously watched Teen Titans Go. I just wanted to booyah. He didn't sing about waffles. He didn't want pie. It wasn't like, Cyborg. If, even if you go back to like the pre Teen Titans Go when it was just Teen Titans, Teen Titans yeah. he's still like a teenager, like. Having fun, like dicking around, like all yeah. the time. This like, guy had no fun. No yeah. fun. He was just a sad sack the yeah. whole time. Well, very I think, serious. I think this is how you can tell. Too. Oh, and he's the um, the the store the in movies uh, Deus Ex Machina, by the way, because he had the answers to everything. Oh yeah. They're like, well, what do we need to do? Oh, Cyborg figured it out. Like it, they just had him in there so that they could just yeah. randomly pull some okay. yeah, solution out. You of don't their exactly. Ass. You don't have a uh, solution to your problem. Cyborg has the solution. Right. True. I was all, I, tapped into all these computers and figured yeah. this out. Yeah. Right. While you were well, yeah. running your bullshit story, I calculated that there's a good chance we can bring Superman back to life. Right. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, he knew the answers to everything. Everything. Yeah. Well, and I think this I think this is I think this is what the problem was and I think you can so I know watching this entire movie from front to back, I could tell what scenes belong to Zack Snyder and what scenes belong to Joss Whedon. Yeah, for like, sure. you, you you could pluck them out. Like I said, for example, I will tell you this, everything that had to do with the Flash, Whedon some of it, um, and so there's, and it's it's the filler scenes too. Like so, for example, when they go into the Daily Planet, and then that woman's yes. freaking cussing up a yes. storm on yes. the news. Mm-hmm. That's the, that's that's Whedon. That's yeah. that's totally Whedon right there. But then it switches back to. Here. I think if Whedon would have had Cyborg basically at, from the very beginning, I think the reason a lot of that wasn't reshot is because it was expensive, and so they're not going to reshoot except so no. basically a lot yeah, of that. Yeah, if you've already put all the time and money into mm-hmm. building CGI stuff because you're ready to go, you're not going to reshoot Exactly. That. So I think I said, I think if Joss Whedon was in there from the, the, the very beginning, I think it actually would have helped this movie out so much more rather than going back and through and reshooting because, like I said, it looks like it's stuck together. Like I said, there's I, there's tape and super glue everywhere. It's, it's not a cohesive movie. I have always said, I mean, Zack Snyder did fine with, like, the Frank Miller movies – Right, bringing those back to life, but like, I am kind. It is it, this is really bad to say because the circumstances of him leaving are pretty bad. But I am so glad that he is out mm-hmm. because he does not. He cannot stop making Watchmen movies. Yep. When he tries to make like Justice League movies, well, I think his style was great in the Three Hundred. I remember watching the Three Hundred, and I was just blown away. Like, wow, right. what an incredible movie! So, but then you get so used to seeing that same formula over right. and over and over again. And to your point, Zack Snyder never really changes it up. It's always the same formula every even, single time. Even to the point where, like, every other time you see Batman, he's wearing goggles. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you turn him into the owl. Yes. Right. Like I didn't the night get owl? that. I, yeah. yeah. Like why? Yeah. Why? Why, is he why do you bring back the goggles? goggles? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, well, like one of the things Marvel, like MCU does better too, right? Is they have multiple directors kind of jump in and take over different parts of the movies. All are kind this of is cohesive. Exactly. But this kind of feels like Zack Snyder's got his hands in everything so far. True. Yeah. And now that you brought up Batman, what are you guys' thoughts on Batman? Because I got to be honest with you, even though Ben Affleck is the most physically uh, matching, imposing? Yeah, yeah, imposing mm-hmm. Batman, he felt really weak in this movie. Uh, honestly, it's not- I liked him as a Batman better in B- uh, Batman vs Superman than this movie. Yes, um, I would agree. Like I said, even though that movie was a steaming pile, uh, like it's, it's he I, I, his his Batman portrayal in that movie was a lot better because in this one you can tell, and that's like I said that goes back to the Josh Whedon like thing. Like I said mm-hmm. they he had such a foreboding angry attitude in the very in the very first that one like i said you, you should have kept that going then they tried to make him funny and then, like i said it, it, in this movie they try to make him funny and i think the funny part almost focuses on his weakness because there's a part where you know superman throws him to the ground he's like yeah something's bleeding for sure yeah. it just didn't it seems so out of character yeah. for batman the i'm rich comment i think yeah. got me i think that's True. when like, what's your superpower? I'm rich. Yeah, right? Yeah. It was the little jokes they tried to throw in. Yeah. I, I will say, though, I apparently I'm the only one who liked this Batman better than Batman versus Superman Batman. I think it's because I hated that movie so much. Well, and, and I feel like he was more Bruce Wayne in that than he was Batman. This one, he's in the Batman costume a whole lot more. And when he's in that Batman costume, I do think I like that better than what we got in BBS. Yeah, I mean, well, you bring up some good points. There's, there's a lot of points where he does shine. He kind of acts like as a leader, even though it's alluded to that he wants Wonder Man wonder woman to be the leader but that's a wonder woman's flaw is she can't be the leader she right doesn't she doesn't want, want to be out in the spotlight yeah. yeah but i don't want this, people to die because of me this batman was well, definitely in what the happened suit in world war one just remind me about that movie because i just Steve watched Steve trevor movie. yeah and like Triggered. all the people that Triggered. you killed you know at the yeah. you know in world war one those people were fine yeah, so basically those were germans <laughs> yeah all you have to do to piss off wonder woman is say steve trevor yes yeah. That she's triggered. That, that's 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 her code word. She, 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 she hulks out. <laughs> yeah. oh, I can't say hulks out. She. Uh, I will say. I think Wonder Woman was one of the strongest characters in this movie. I think she did a great job she, reprising her role. She just felt exactly the same as she was in Wonder Woman. Yeah. Uh, and I know she well, did good. And I know I'm probably gonna get flack for this, but I actually liked. Uh, Ezra Miller's The Flash. I did not. Boo. Boo, Scott. No. I, I, I think it's the yeah, Grant Gustin uh, problem. It, it, I like it, that it, character so it much. Is, it is. Well, I just I like it because they went a different way with it, and it still well, worked. And yeah. it fit more of, it's true. of the comic-y Barry Allen, who's just... It did. So, his brain goes way too fast for everyone else to comprehend, and he's kind of a weird, awkward right. jackass. I yeah. think I'm kind of 50-50. Like, I, I liked how they focused on, okay, this is a a rookie flash so he doesn't yeah. really know how to master his powers which the grant gustin show is great at explaining that it shows that over time he it's gets better and better using the development. His powers which feels kind of familiar like i don't know tom holland spider-man yeah. right. I, I, but they they took it to a point movie? lord of the rings spider-man <laughs> avengers i feel like they took this flash a little too Guardians far of the galaxy his... at the end with uh ego the living planet with a planet with a thing all coming to life at the end Ooh. instead of the, all the death and destruction like i said now you have ego coming to life at the, at the very end like i said there's so many movies that are... yeah i feel like they took this flash a little too far with the comedy and like okay you're focusing on the fact that he's a rookie we get it but you're you every chance that they got they were trying to make sure that we knew that he didn't really know what he was yeah. doing. And I hated his costume. No. Yeah, I thought yeah. his costume was way too armor-esque. Yeah. Well, like, it, it was, it was like the speed suit. Well, like, it was too armor-esque. Yeah, the unitard, it was too armor-esque. The but then thing. once on the close-ups, it looks like a fake Halloween mask. Oh. Like it's all it's all plasticky like around his eyes and stuff, like 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 where it cuts off around his eyes. Well, and I I've said this before, even before I watched the movie. You guys know this. I'm probably beating a dead horse, but why the hell is his lightning not red? Like, why is it nothing red? Why is it all white lightning that destroys everything when he's around it? Like, that is not what happens in the comics. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, in the comics, I said there's different. I said there's different levels of lightning based upon his speeds and, the, and his development of powers. Yeah. So I said it, it, it goes. Through, it goes. Through, but, but I said t- to your point though is the white lightning is basically the most when powerful he's at his maximum when he's, speed when he's exactly at his maximum so he's speed. Yep. not doing that now that makes right. no sense then yeah it's unless true. it's to separate it from the arrowverse which okay. I, I it just makes me appreciate the the, the cw version of the flash that much it more fits. it's because they do such like I said, 
with the speed force that they do and like i said just yeah. the, the the made for tv special effects that they have i'm like it makes it more believable for me that like said so that he's yeah i agree true i mean I've, I've got my gripes with the cw flash i feel it's a little campy a little corny sometimes but overall it's a great version of the flash um at least he's not eating pizza all the time Right, they they the CW yeah, one they, they established that real quick. I, I don't know why they had to show this Flash eating a whole pizza. That was completely unnecessary. Yeah. Other than it was that forced, uh, forced humor aspect that they tried to do. They try, they're trying to throw in like little bits about the character so that everyone yeah. knows. Like they had to throw in well, the, like it, my metabolism was really high, so I have to eat a lot. I call yeah. it the speed force. They yeah. say it okay, too thanks. much though. Yeah, like yeah. it's 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 my back to my gripe about this flash like there's some things i like and some things i don't and the fact that they focused on his blood sugar so much it's yeah. like okay we get it yeah. like just drop it now i because it kind of reversed in course a little bit to the the cd class i just it's popped in my mind right now um i want there to be a real life big belly burger just because they talk about it so much in the tv show yeah, right. i want to go there <laughs> <All right. laughs> there should be there should be like a pop-up shop yeah somewhere. It, it was because like, so every every like so at least like so every other episode you get someone coming oh. in the bag with a, yeah Big Belly Burger. Like, Last like, week, I brought you Big yeah. Belly Burger. Oh, Barry, you're sad. Hey, I'm Iris. Have some Big Belly Burger. Right. Every so, time. Now, I, I mentioned something that kind of irked me or, or adds questions to it is when I said during that Big Ops battle, I there think, was a Green Lantern. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. Clearly yeah. showed a Green Lantern. A, a few Green Lanterns. Yeah. Which yeah. is like, if he's not going to be in the movie, why even show it? Well, what, what, why show it? You have to establish that it exists in this universe. Right. So when they want to use it later, they can be they like, can ah, remember in Justice League. We had one. But here's the, the thing with that. So for anyone who knows, Green Lanterns, the Green Lantern Corps, each are assigned a sector, right? Mm -hmm. And each ring is assigned to a sector. So when a Green Lantern from that sector dies... The ring finds somebody within that sector to then take over the patrol for that sector. Right. So 4,000 years ago, the Green Lantern for our sector died. The ring flies off, clearly flies off to go find a new thing. Yeah. So then that means then for like the last couple thousand years, somebody else has been running around with the, the ring for our sector. Doing nothing. Yep. Doing nothing. Very valid point. Like Plus a Kryptonian shows up on our planet and starts wrecking shit. Yeah, and no, the Green Lantern that doesn't clue them into like, hey, maybe well, we should come down and like check this well, out. Also talking about Kryptonians and lanterns. Did you notice that there's a scene that was in the trailer that wasn't in the movie when Stephen Wolf was talking about, hey, this planet, you know, this there's no lantern, there's no lanterns, there's no Kryptonians. And like I said, that part doesn't exist in this. <laughs> right. Version. Yeah. They he, cut that. he only talks about the Kryptonians. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. He doesn't say anything about a lantern. So you like, you you made a point to show them off. So was there more than one lantern, or was it just the, the one guy, the, like the one dude knocking things down, yeah, okay. and he gets killed by Stephen, yeah, and his right. ring flies off. And right? yeah, I think his ring flies Scott off. brings up a really good point. You know, if there should show, have been one, yeah, there should have been one from the very beginning. Because if you think about it, Hal right. Jordan was an original member of the Justice League. Oh, yeah. but you're 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 trying to make sense of this, well, not, and, right? And you have question, a plan in your head. First off, they first don't. Off, the question I have for this is because I always thought that the Green Lantern was going to show up. Because what was the tagline for this movie? The the original posters when I said when they first announced it. Unite, what, what what did they say? What you unite, remind me? Unite the seven. seven yeah. And okay, so we have Batman, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, Flash, Flash, Aquaman, Superman, Aquaman, Superman. six. By my count, that's six. Right. Who is number seven in their marketing campaign? Yeah. Why use Unite the Seven if they're only going to show us so six. six characters? Are they counting Alfred? Because that's kind of shitty, if that's the case. I, I think that's no. a very valid point. Well, that and at the end, I'm like, why are you putting the Hall of Justice inside the old Wayne Manor? It, right. It, because there's a room for a table where we can sit six people and room to grow. Yeah. Well, I, I, I feel it so was we like switched. This, we switched to like Property Brothers at the yeah. end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. I, that, I feel it was just a awesome. totally <laughs> unnecessary scene. Um, like I said, ex especially like the fact that he's like, "Hey, you know what? We got to." They they could have just said it in dialogue. Hey, we got to find some place, you know, to, to to like. Yeah, we got we got to yeah, find I mean, a headquarters. I yeah. get they're trying to set it up for the future, but yeah, it seemed a little bit unnecessary to focus on the fact that it was the Wayne Mayor. And like we all know, the Hall of Justice okay. is not the old Wayne. And Mayor. you don't have to have the yeah. the, the watchtower that's out in space. Like you can do like a yeah. The one thing I found funny, and I said, "So this is I, I'm stealing this from another podcast." And then I'm like, because I'm I I watch this I watch this entire scene play out. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? They're they're totally right. So Martha Wayne, I said the whole Martha thing. And I said her farm goes into foreclosure. 
said so at no point in time up until the very end does Bruce Wayne come in and basically save her farm. Yeah. Right. She's basically like said she's like said especially when he was at both funerals. Yeah, he was at both he was at both funerals. He knows her specifically. He saved her life. He's talked yeah. with her. It, it made it clear that they've had conversations in between the movies. There's a scene of them interacting. Yeah. Right? Before yeah, yeah. Superman comes back, yeah, yeah. and he knows that yeah, she's she been talks about talk, being like, "Oh, we talked to Mr. Wayne or whatever." Like, was there they, any point to that other than for the joke where uh, Bruce Wayne bought the bank that foreclosed on the home? I think that was I don't set up for yeah, that. It was yeah. entire, no other point, right? It was entire setup for that, yeah. And then coming back to life is itchy. In case anybody who dies yeah. and comes back to life, coming back to life is itchy. Yeah. Thank you, Joss Whedon. Okay. I didn't even need Martha Wayne at all. No. Movie, or not Martha. Martha, and whatever. It's Superman. Right. You're getting confused with the Martha. Yeah. Martha. Ah. This, this is going to come out of left field, but this is something my wife had said too, by the way. When she first showed up, my wife's literal comment was, boy, Amy Adams looks rough. <laughs> 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 rough. So, speaking of Amy well, Adams. What happened? I love how she's in the movie just as, like, no, for, like, no point in anything. Speaking of Amy Adams, I think it's interesting that they use her as kind of like the Black Widow to Hulk, if you think about it. Yeah. Because Superman's like raging yeah. out, beating, the shit, out of beating the shit out of all the Justice League members. He doesn't know who he is. And then, you know, they bring Lois Lane out and all of a sudden he's calmed down. Oh, I, felt, I felt like it was just like the Avengers where Black Widow comes out and says, hey, sun's getting low, right. you know, calming down this Hulk of a Time beast. Time to go to bed, big man. And then all of a sudden, he, what, he remembers everything yeah. because he sees Lois Lane? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I get everything. He's like, oh, I remember you and I know who all these people are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow, like, like, I love how also they talk about like the whole, like, it's Bruce Wayne's fault that Superman died. Is it his fault because I, he made the spear? Yeah, I didn't I, like, get that at all. Can I call, can I call time as he's on this entire conversation? Yeah. Scott, for the last like 20 minutes, has had a picture of the devil from Legend on his phone. Yes. I just, I just want to hear I, what he has to say. So, so I brought this up because I wanted to get a good time for it. Because this is my one of my negative things about the CG that they used in this. So everyone saw Steppenwolf and the CG that they used. This is a picture of Tim Curry. And if anybody wants to look at it, look up Tim Curry in Legend. This was done in like 1985 by Ridley Scott, and it looks better than Steppenwolf did in 2017 via CG. Yeah, I, I will say Steppenwolf looked There's a little 20 awkward. 20 years ago, they were doing better like visuals for the bad guy than they did in this movie. Well, and you know, Marvel gets a bad rap for weak villains. You know, a lot of their movies, like they just don't feel like they have much connection with the character. I thought Steppenwolf was one of the weaker. He had no villains of any of these movies. Well, I tried to conquer this planet well, once and then got yeah, that's exiled for thousands well, of years. Now I'm back to do it again. Regardless of even, like I said, it being a weak character in the movie, he's like a weak character in the comics. Yeah. Like he's he's a nobody in the comics. Well, in the way they he's introduce him, does Dark him. Dark Side's uncle. Yeah, he's, he does no justice the way they introduce him because yeah. all of a sudden he just shows up. You don't get any backstory. You kind of get a little backstory of like, yeah, he's. You know, try to conquer us before, but that's it. His backstory is his current story. He wants the mother. He used to want the mother boxes. He wants the mother boxes now. I don't know why. I don't even know why these mother boxes really matter. Right. Like, we would have turned this planet it, into my to look like my home world. Home, why? Yeah. yeah. Right. What's well, the reason? What's the reason it? that you want to do that? And they like, say dark side maybe once, one time for yeah. once, one yeah. time, and then they don't even show him saying it. It's basically it's a zoom out shot and it's just dialogue. I'm doing this. For Dark Side. Yeah. It felt like it was kind of added in. So this was kind of mm -hmm. like, they're like, hey, we need a villain for this to set up Dark Side. Mm -hmm. Like, how about Steppenwolf? He's related. He had his Kenner Superpowers action figure in the 80s. People kind of know who he is. Mm -hmm. It's probably He's all like the Kenner closest. Superpowers action figure. Yes. I, I just tried to yes. force that into this that conversation. That sounds like a legit that, reasoning, yeah, probably. That is yeah. awesome. Yeah. So it was a weak villain for sure. But... The thing that really got me is you set up this whole movie about all these people and they fight him and they he's always winning every fight. Superman shows up and literally beats the living tar out of him in like two seconds. Yeah. Well, even like, Aquaman and Wonder Woman were giving him a good time there while Superman right. was saving those kids. Yeah. Well, they, they're, they're like stalemating, right? They're yeah. at most like it takes two people to and then Superman comes in and like one punch knocks him down and then starts ground pounding him. Yeah. Well, you're like, oh... And then it Why was did done. we need everyone else? 
Like this should have just been a Superman movie because that's all we needed. So yeah. well, they needed Cyborg to use his Cyborg magic and the Flash to, to use his lightning. Yeah, and you know, right? if you think about it, yeah. uh, just think about you know, I'm I'm trying to play devil's advocate here because I am the the resident DC guy, so I'm trying to stick with the movie for a little bit. But I, I went into it thinking like, okay, I'm not going to think about any Marvel movies. I'm going to try to take a fresh take. But speaking to Scott's point, you know, you have one really overpowered character. Just think about Vision from marvel and he was in civil war and why wasn't he used more you know it's it's an interesting thing like okay why is superman yeah, this we, overpowering we guy but the, the the reason is what happened to roadie that's why you don't use vision that much well because it was vision's fault but even before that he could have stopped that whole fight before he even started yeah you know so like i, I know i'm bringing kind of like no. Throw a wrench well, into it, our, our bashing it, of DC the, the here. They oh, well, I, I, Scarlet well, Witch, who can stop Vision. And it's not bash. It's not bashing of DC. It's bashing of this piece it's of just, shit it's movie. It's not a so, good movie because Wonder Woman. I think we've yeah. all seen was a pretty good movie. So even though I have my gripes like, with the movie, I gotta say it was cool seeing all the characters in, on screen at once. I gotta say, ab- you know, as a absolutely. big DC fan, I, I really enjoyed oh, that. I, so the, what, real quick, so the one character we didn't talk about was Aquaman. Who? Oh, true. Uh, uh, Moma? You mean, you mean, uh, you know, underwater bro? Yeah. <laughs> underwater you, bro that basically likes whiskey and likes to litter. Apparently, <laughs> he's chucked that bottle of yeah. gas in the ocean. And all we like, know yeah, is that you, those people are walking around barefoot and shit. Like <laughs> that's true. And all we know about him is he doesn't like to be part of. Oh. The Atlanteans, and, 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 but he doesn't like being part of the humans either. He doesn't like so being part of the humans. He kind of hangs out I, the ocean I do like by this himself. One fishing village in Alaska, and by the way, Atlantis is somewhere near Alaska. Yeah, you, you didn't know that. Yeah, apparently. Well, and and also, like I said, and apparently, like I said it's it's they've already come out and said this that the way that uh, Aquaman is communicating with uh, is it Mira? Uh, was that, that who that was? Uh, is it's in, in uh, his own standalone movie? It's going to look nothing like that. When they like said how they communicate and how she does does like the air bubble and, and, and things like that, it's gonna look nothing like that in the Aquaman movie. So, why did they do the air bubble? That I, was my other question too. I, it's like I don't know. You can breathe and talk into water. Like clearly, you communicate somehow. You don't need air bubbles for every time you talk. Like they could have they, they the not talked at all and just did like said the the, the, mind, the mind dialogue over. Like said the easy Atlanteans well, have save yourself some money on the well, on the CG. Well, I think that's another thing that you're not going to know that unless you know about Aquaman yeah. before you. Into yeah, the they would have had to explain it, and they didn't have time to explain it because they were trying to cram too much crap into this short movie. So rather well, than it, saying, "Hey, they can speak telepathically," let's just let them bubble. talk to each other. Air, well, my biggest gripe about this movie is everyone's motivations were paper thin. Like all the characters, the reason why they want to st- they join up is paper thin. Aquaman's especially because he's mm-hmm. talking with Mary and she's like, "You're the firstborn son of Atlantis." Like, oh okay, yeah. And like my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom abandoned me. Well, sh- well, it's your turn. You're like, you're the firstborn. It's your responsibility to get the mother box back. Okay. Basically, you That's, have to do this whether or not you like it. Yeah, like, or not. And this is, and the person who cl- has stated clearly they doesn't want to go there is like, you know what? You're right. It's my responsibility. I'm gonna go get that mother box for Atlantis. I'm gonna go well, hang out with that guy who dresses as a bat. Yeah, yeah. And like it, the guy that I just turned down who, now that now that the mother box was taken and yeah, they told I, me I have to get I, it back. Okay, so. And, at this point in time, how does the whole world not know who Bruce that Bruce Wayne is Batman? <laughs> because they literally told are everybody. They're strolling yeah. along a beach. They're strolling along the beach. He calls him Bruce Wayne and Batman. Yeah. In, in front of all yeah, you, in you, front you, of all the people. You, yeah. I was going to talk he, about that. He, on the roof, one of the very first opening scene, burglar comes on. He's talking to Alfred. How many Alfreds are there in the world? Yeah, like I said, like said, where you can't just narrow, narrow well, down. Clearly, he's he has all to. these very high tech things. Like you need millions of dollars that they could look expensive. <laughs> could look expensive. You know what? Bruce Wayne's Butler's Alfred. Maybe it's him. Right. Yeah. I think uh, you know, being a big Batman fan like I am, I, I I know his identity is so precious to him. Like in the comics, in all the shows, in past movies. He's not quick to tell anybody his identity. So the fact that he's telling everybody who he is, you know, there's no more mystery to it anymore. They even bring up Jim Gordon. Like, how does Jim Gordon not know that he's Bruce Wayne by this point? I, yeah. I'm just saying. You should just I said, pick up the phone back. I'm going to call Bruce. Yeah. If you go, right. if you go and watch the '94 '95 Justice League cartoon, 
Batman doesn't even take off his mask because he doesn't want to know, know, know who people like like who he, he is. He doesn't tell anybody. He doesn't who tell he anybody. Is. So the like so the members of the Justice League don't even know it's him. That's part except of, for Superman. That's part of his Who's contingency plan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like he they alluded to, he's got contingency plans. He's always got a plan for somebody. But part of that is the fact that nobody knows who he is, and I think they just totally ruined that in this yeah. movie. Everybody knows who he is. Everybody knows Bruce Wayne's Batman. There's no mystery to it anymore. All right. So. You guys have hated on it pretty hard, but we have. It, but was it better than you thought it would be? Because it was definitely better than I thought it would be. That that was the one takeaway going into. I thought it was going to be a steaming hot pile of shit, yep. and it turned out to just be a mediocre superhero. Yep. Movie. I think my expectations were so low. Like it beat them. You know what? I'm sitting there like almost at the end. Like this wasn't that bad. Like mm-hmm. it was an okay, tolerable movie. So yeah, yeah. For any, we're shitting on it because we're nerds, right? And we, there's a lot of things that we'd want out of it. But is this a bad superhero movie? Kind of. But we also have that that lens of like good superhero movies that we've had like a decent set. But it was a tolerable oh. good. It was a it was a entertaining movie. I sat through the whole uh, thing. Think, was actually entertained by the movie. The like yeah, I think, it is a good try on DC's part. I talked about this before, but I think. Its biggest weakness is the fact that you're going to compare it to Marvel as soon as you get out of it. Yeah, like that was course. nothing like a Marvel movie. No, and it, feels, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't Avengers. It wasn't Age of Ultron. It wasn't Civil War. But yeah, I mean, it was okay. Well, it, I was. I liked it better than I thought it would. It was yeah, better than Batman it, versus Superman. It's definitely better yeah. than Batman. Yes, versus like a thousand times better than yeah. that. and Suicide Squad. Yeah, yeah have you guys yeah, heard exactly. before. I'm a big DC fan, so just to be able to see the whole league together was awesome. I feel like. This was way too early. Uh, they should not have done a Justice was, League right now. Marvel they needed to had build an all excellent those characters. formula. Show me Iron Man. Show me all these individual characters. Build the stories. Build the stories. Then give me a Start. team up. And there's no question about anybody's motives or where they're from or who their powers are or any of that well, stuff. Because on. Justice League was just a, such a mixed bag because you don't know a lot about who these yeah. people are. And I they think, just showed I up th- and they're like, okay, we're going to fight now. I, exactly. I think that's the biggest thing. And I think I said, I said it, I, I, it wasn't a, uh, necessarily a bad movie. It just it, it it could have been executed way better. And I think the thing is, like I said, if they would have even just, if they wanted to do full-on team ensemble right now, you know, make it the original two movies. Because this Give did me- so, so poorly, I don't, that's it. We're not going to see another one. Well, that, it's 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 not going to happen. Uh, it's just one because of those like give, give a give a build up of the yeah. team and then go fight well, Steppenwolf or whatever. Jeremy like. brings a really interesting point. Like, if you really want this franchise to go as far as they say they do, then why would you start with the Justice League? Why not make that like your pinnacle point? Like, okay, we have built up the brand. Give me three or four. Now it's our time to join least. all these guys together. Why would you? Throw it in so early, and now you're you're giving people a bad taste in their mouth about what yeah. is to come. You will not. I said. I they said. Mark my words right now. I'm like, you are not going to see a sequel to Justice League. So all those little teaser scenes and and, and things that you saw. The only thing that's gonna that's good that's gonna be on the docket that's that's, that's currently on the docket right now is the Deathstroke movie. Like I said, that's it's it's currently it's gonna start uh, uh, filming Batman here pretty soon. Standalone, right? Yeah. So well, that's Batman standalone with Deathstroke, right? No, or is it Deathstroke standalone Deathstroke. Deathstroke movie? Oh wow, uh, that's, that's done by the guy who directed the Raid. Um, so it's gonna be. Uh, well, we get Aquaman too, right? Oh, yeah, Aquaman's Aquaman like Aquaman done. Movies, yeah, Aquaman, done. Aquaman's done. Aquaman's done. But I yeah. said, you're not, you're not gonna get another ju- Justice League. Another Justice League. It's gonna not gonna happen. Yeah. So the whole yeah. scene with Lex Luthor and well, saying, "Hey, we need a league of our own." You're never gonna see it. To, it's to, never gonna happen. To your thing though, principal photography has started for ju- uh, Suicide Squad two, which I never thought was gonna get a sequel. Wow, that's even more surprising. But yeah, you know, it's like it's to your point, Jeremy. They're gonna allude to the fact there's Justice League two, and it's probably not gonna happen. If you remember in Amazing Spider Man two with Andrew Garfield, yeah, there's a scene at the end that's so yeah. You know, Amazing Spider Man two, they allude at the very end of the movie that. There's a Sinister Six coming. They show you, you know, kind of the Rhino, and they allude to a couple others. But that Doc Ock, that like movie the was not in there. Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, the Doc and, Ock. yeah, yeah they that... show some really cool stuff, but that's never going to come to fruition now. And we know because there's somebody else that's Spider Man. But even at the time, it just did not get the traction that it should have had to build a Sinister Six. And I think this is going to be the same case. Well, it's the lowest grossing DC extended universe movie. 
uh, as, as far as the opening weekend. Really? For the, yeah. for the opening weekend. So basically, it, it's... <laughs> that's awful. Yeah. Each each movie in succession has made less and less. Like Suicide Squad made more than this. Yes. Suicide Squad made 133 million opening weekend. This made 94. Wow, that's crazy. So now for anyone going in though, this is I, I'm gonna steal something my wife said because I think this is the best thing. Because I drug her to both this and Thor Ragnarok, and at the end of it, I said I just off the things like, okay, just because I'm a Marvel fan, I had to find out which one did you like better. Her answer was surprising was Justice League. So I had to find out why, right? Like, okay, why the hell did he choose Justice League over that? And her literal response was, I knew what Thor was going to be going into it. And it hit what I expected exactly. Like, it was that movie. I went into Justice League look, thinking it was going to be the biggest piece of crap. And it ended up being like a middle-of-the-road movie. So it exceeded my expectations a lot more than I thought it would. Yeah, You know, I, I think that's a really, really good point. I, I kind of almost feel the same way about uh, Justice League was probably a little bit more enjoyable than Thor because of what your wife said. I've seen Chris Hemsworth in as Thor, what, in a couple Avengers movies, like f four or five movies at this point. I've seen Hulk. I knew exactly what I was going to get. And that's the part of, of Ragnarok that I didn't love is it's getting a little stale like it was still a good movie i knew those characters exactly but this i like i gotta figure out who cyborg is i gotta see the flash on the big screen it was new and at least a little bit exciting right. yeah i mean i haven't seen ragnarok but from what i heard about justice league and seeing the critic scores i was expecting something much worse and i was actually yeah. pleasantly surprised yeah. Yeah. so i mean definitely going in if you're a fan of comic book movies yeah, the short and skinny of it is check out Justice League. Like yeah, we're, go, we're shitting on it, so, but let, let, we got to check it. Let's like, so go, go watch it. Go see it for on a, yourself. On a file, so like we've kind of done our kind of last few gradings. Uh, what do you give it? So, can we do half scores? You can do half scores. Okay, you can do whatever you. I want. I can do whatever I want. This is I'm in charge of this score on my podcast. Um, I'm gonna give it a two point five. It was a dead middle of the road movie for me. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a three out of five. I agree. Three out of five. I, I am also going to go three out of five. Um, I think that it had components of it that were good. I think the, the things that didn't make it good are things that aren't necessarily story driven, but just the the actual direction of the actual right. movie. Kind of yeah, like I think I, I do wise and everything is that they messed up is fixable. Yeah. And I think Henry Cavill really came into his own as being Superman, this is probably the strongest Superman performance. You know, fake mustache, CGI all, removal aside. Weird, weird CGI I feel face. like this was probably the strongest Superman we've seen. Uh -huh. I, I agree. So uh, definitely, I said, if you haven't seen Justice League, go, go see it. Go check it out for yourself. Let us know what you think in the comments. Yeah. So before we wrap up, we have to talk about something else. Something super mega. Something super mega Star Wars? Are you talking about the Super Mega Star Wars giveaway? Thank Did you. Did you just say Super Mega Star Wars giveaway? Did you say Super Mega Star Wars prize pack giveaway? I was trying to, but I couldn't get the damn words out of my mouth. <laughs> yes. Well, that's kind of like Leo last week. <laughs> yeah. He couldn't say it either. Our, our Super Mega Star Wars prize pack giveaway. God, you guys got to stop letting me name things. It's a mouthful. Um, is going on right now. It closes in a couple weeks. There's daily entries. Uh, Jeremy recorded an awesome video where you can see everything you want, including two Funko Pops with the pork chase. Uh, eight comic books and some other super awesome stuff. Um, so check that out. Enter at stsguys.fun. If you've already entered, don't forget about those daily entries. Um, you can also refer friends. Some really cool stuff that we're trying to give away to you guys. Um, Keep got, going and watching yeah. those videos. Yes. Definitely check out that video. And if you guys missed the keyword from last week, go check out last week's podcast. We got the secret keyword. Get you another entry. Right. Within the first 10 minutes of that uh, episode 14 of the podcast, you'll get that entry yeah. for... Get that code word for those bonus entries. So, so for those like so the daily entries that, that Larry was talking about, he said you want to make sure you do that because currently I just I just, I just looked at it. There are five thousand fifty four entries for the contest so far. That is and incredible. And there are twenty six days left. Awesome. So thank you guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you for the, the support. <laughs> let me let me make sure we all heard that five thousand entries right now, and there's still twenty six days. Twenty six days yeah. left yeah. for the so, little STS guys contest. I honestly thought at this point we should have knocked a zero off the end of that, and that was what I thought we would. Five hundred. Good job, guys. Woo, we right? got it. But now we're at five thousand. Yeah. yeah, that's five thousand entries. So thank you for your wonderful yes. support out there. Like I said, we we do this because of you. Like I said, this this is truly amazing. So we are truly thankful for for everything that you guys do out there yes thank you guys awesome yeah thanks a lot um also too just kind of let you know for some uh future episodes what we go, going on so uh 
I know Larry was talking about our super mega prize pack giveaway. Um, there's another holiday coming up. And with holidays coming up, you know what that means. What does that mean? That means super mega Christmas special. <laughs> what? Super mega Christmas special? Please, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember, we had a pretty awesome super Halloween yeah. special. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so I think, I think like I said, for gonna... our, our first ever inaugural mm -hmm. uh, super mega Christmas special, we'll have something special planned. Uh, we're still working out the details of that, so uh, expect if, that here in the next uh, few weeks. If it's anything like any Christmas I've ever had, uh, copious amounts of alcohol will be involved. Absolutely. <laughs> um. Video wise, real quick, uh, I should be getting Geek Fuel this week. So if you like our Geek Fuel unboxings, that one's going to hit real fast. Loot Crate should be coming in as well. Awesome. And Bambox. Awesome. So it looks like it's sub box week. So guys, stay tuned on our YouTube channel. There's going to be a ton of stuff hitting this week. I know Jeremy's got a couple of videos. I've got some that I haven't even told these guys about yet. So uh, just make sure you're, you're checking us out on YouTube. Uh, if you can get there directly by going to stsguys.online. The other thing, too, is we uh, have uh, Twitch. Oh, shoot. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, someone at this table, me, did a did an awesome live stream on Twitch. Um, I hooked up my GameCube to my TV. Yes, my legit old school 2000 GameCube. Um, no emulators here. Uh, I played some Mario Kart Double Dash. Had a few people join. So uh, if you were one of those, thank you. Um, I'll get better at live streams, I promise. It's really well, weird sitting there talking and, to myself. And I'm always online playing games, so quite often you'll probably see me jumping on there playing yep. Nate, something. Nate's got that Switch. I think we're going to have to hook yeah. it up to Twitch. So we got, yeah, I'm going to switch on there. Want my Switch. PS4 rolling. So. Yeah, my PS4 rolling. Yeah. So so check uh, check Twitter and Instagram. We'll, we'll drop notifications um, of when we're getting ready to do live streams. I tried to do that last time for everybody. Um, might be easier to just do it on Twitter. Yeah. Um, so so check out Twitter, maybe turn on the notifications. Uh, we don't tweet a lot, so you guys will be able to get uh, our Twitch notifications real quick. So you can jump on. If you do, please chat and leave comments so we know we are watching and it'll make talking a whole lot easier. Yeah, and as always, guys, if you appreciate this content, please hit that thumbs up button. It really yes. means a lot to us. Uh, you know, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. We're going to keep giving so you guys good go, content. Go to the sdsguys.fun and use the subscribe link through there. Oh, there you yeah, go. exactly. Get, you get, get, your, get five your, entries get to that entries. Super Mega Star Wars yeah. price back giveaway. Five entries off the bat for yeah. our subscribers. So as much as I want, if you're listening now for the first time and you've made it this far in, um, I, as much as I want you to hit the subscribe on this, go get your free... Uh, your free entries go to stsguys.fun hit the subscribe through there and get yourself uh some entries into our contest all right i think that does it for episode 15 of the stsguys guys so for episode 15 guys this is jeremy this is larry this is nate and this has been scott and we're the stsguys guys have a good night everyone bye